Some people are predicting that the House of Lords, our upper house, will vote in favour of the UK staying in the customs union. So could the Lords really scupper Brexit? The House of Lords is expected to vote for Britain to remain within the EU Customs Union later this week. It's not just an embarrassing defeat for the government, but it's a huge kick in the teeth to the 52% of British voters who turned out to vote for Brexit. The Upper House is currently in the process of debating the government's EU Withdrawal Bill, which sets out the legal framework for Brexit. And an amendment sponsored by the former Conservative chairman, Chris Patton, which is calling for the government to begin negotiations for an arrangement which allows the UK to stay within the customs union, could well be passed with a majority. And if this happens, it means the legislation has to then go back to the House of Commons. It will be passed on from the chattering and half-asleep left-wing lords and baronesses, appointed by successive governments to ensure that their agendas are supported, back to the Commons where it will be voted on again as early as mid-May. That will be after the upcoming local elections, and it could be disastrous for the Tories. A legislative win could have helped their electoral fortunes, but with an expected failure in the Lords, it looks like the Tories will struggle, especially when you consider recent polls showing Labour snapping at their heels and even beating them in some instances. And all this shows just how badly the House of Lords needs reforming, but I'm not talking about some elected chamber. I don't think it needs to be all that complicated. I think it's time that we just got rid of all the useless appointees in the House of Lords and returned to our hereditary system instead. The House of Lords is filled with rich business people and just popular celebrities who've been appointed by the top three political parties. In 2014, former Facebook executive Joanna Shields became a Conservative peer for some reason. It's a place where politicians who are out of a job go to get a salary through the generous Lord's Expenses system. Take the appropriately named Michael Cashman, for instance. He's a former member of the European Parliament for the Labour Party. He was an actor in EastEnders as well. And when he lost his seat in May 2014, the Labour Party kept him on the gravy train by just appointing him into the House of Lords. And who could forget professional victim Baroness Vorsey, the Muslim woman who failed to win a seat in Dewsbury in the 2005 general election. This was despite being uh, added to the Conservative Party's A-list for priority election candidates. And because she didn't win, she was appointed a life peer, which allowed her to serve on the shadow cabinet. That's how desperate they were to have a Muslim woman in the Conservative Party's shadow cabinet, that they just appointed her to the Lords. And so this begs the question, are the best people really being appointed to the upper house, or are left-wing ideologues and useful idiots being appointed to the upper house, which just makes the jobs of the so-called moderates and left-wing anti-democrats easier than ever? Now, it seems to me that if the House of Lords is voting against Brexit, Clearly, the calibre of people within the House is questionable. This issue was already decided on in a referendum. And so amidst uh, talk of House of Lords reform, I think it's important to talk about returning to the Lords to its former glory. I think Britain has the best form of government in the world, at least in theory. We have a parliamentary democracy, a prime minister who fills the role of head of government, and a monarch who serves as head of state. We separate those roles to ensure our PM can do the best job they can, although that's laughable with the politicians we have these days, and so our head of state, Her Majesty the Queen, can keep on doing the fine job that she always does. And our two houses in Parliament allow for an elected House of Lawmakers in the Commons, and then traditionally, hereditary peers in the House of Lords who served as a naturally conservative counterbalance to the elected members. The traditionally hereditary House of Lords contains people with strong local links, with deep passions for their country, the traditions of this country and their regions, and the welfare of the people within their communities. This is an amazing system, but in 1999, Tony Blair destroyed it. The House of Lords Act decreased the membership of the House of Lords from 1,330 to 669 in March 2000. But this wasn't just a reduction in numbers, it was a specific attack on the hereditary system. It removed the right to inherit a seat in the House of Lords and permitted only 92 hereditary peers to remain there on an interim basis. And since then we've seen a gradual increase in famous people, failed politicians and rich businessmen taking up the seats in a house that has a huge effect on national policy and legislation. These people can decide the future of our country and we see that in the news when this week the House of Lords may scupper Brexit and vote in favour of staying in the customs union. 
What Tony Blair did and what successive political leaders have done in the way of appointing useful idiots into the Lords is treason in my books. And if the Lords scop a Brexit, then it could pave the way for a new debate on the future of the upper chamber. And I don't think it's off the cards that we may face a new kind of House of Lords. And it likely won't be hereditary. It'll be elected. And with the dominance of the two-party system in 2018, Labour's clever postal voting successes and a changing demographic, I worry what that means for the future of this country. Watch me and the rest of Rebel on our brand new Rebel app, which is available now on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store.